Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry this video took so long. Uh, I've been super swamped and I wanted to, you know, have a game plan on how I was going to approach this one. But yeah, today we're going to talk about Cesar Diaz. Um, he was known for his amplifier modifications, his own line of amplifiers and his pedals. Um, basically, a, you know, a amp, amp tech to the stars from everybody from Bob Dylan, Keith Richards, Ronnie Wood, G.E. Smith, you know, the list goes on and on, and especially most notable, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Caesar has said in some of his interviews, uh, you can attribute Stevie Ray Vaughan's sound to, to Caesar. Really, really wild to think that, you know, back then he was helped shape and mold these guys to create these, um, you know, iconic sounds, iconic tones that we have today. But I wanted to talk a little bit about my, uh, my Caesar Diaz pedal collection because uh, I've, I've collected and I've purchased and I've saved over the years to really amass a pretty pretty cool collection if I do say so myself and you know I will start off by saying first of all for some of the prices these are getting online um, it's really really crazy because face it you know some of them aren't aren't gonna sound good and um, you know I've bought and sold ones that you know, I had I mean, it may have had two of the same, and I said, well, this one on the left that I'm playing sounds so much better. You know, I moved the the other one along, and you know, tried to replace it with an even better one. So you keep building up and building up. But um, I'm really, really grateful to have the ones that I do have. Sadly, we lost Caesar in in uh, the late '90s, and um, you know, he took a lot of his genius with him. Some of his earlier builds, especially regarding amplifiers, were extremely um, rugged and cavemanish in a way, you know, but he was, he was attributed as many say to shoving 20 pounds of shit in a 10 pound bag. But, um, it really, uh, came across his work, you know, his amplifiers are right up there with guys like Dumble, Tommy Cougar, Bluto Tone, just basically taking, you know, our favorite Fender, Fender circuits and just beefing them up and making, where they fit, where they lacked, or where they 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 fell flat, you know, he would increase treble, he would increase bass or pull bass, he would provide mids, volume boosts, you know, things like that. Just, just incredible work and a genius. Definitely, um, you know, like I said, he uh, he took a lot of his tricks and his tips with him. He was known to help out a lot of uh, musicians coming up to in the time before his death. Philip Sace being one of them, um, he became close with Caesar and got to spend some time in his house and I heard some great stories about that. It was really wild to hear that. I, unfortunately, I never got to meet Caesar only, you know, through, you know, reading and stuff on the internet. I was able to learn about him. There's a great uh, YouTube video, <clears throat> basically like a, a helpful video um, with Caesar on there. And it's just basically like these little tricks he would do, how he would service an amp. If you're in a jam, a pickup breaks, it's a really cool video. I'll put the link down below so you guys can check it out. But yeah, he was just a genius. And uh, you know, it's a shame that we can't uh, keep those guys forever, you know? I will note too, I also have a 1964 Fender Pro uh, that was modified by Caesar uh, with larger transformers um, and a, an Alltech 15 inch speaker. And inside, Caesar, you know, gave his stamp and the mods that he did. He writes inside there and dated it. Really cool because there's a really cool story about this amp uh, that goes along with it. And someday I'll share it. But it's just a really ballsy, he took a 35 watt amp and basically made it like 50 watts. And it's, it hits hard. Um, you know, and like I said, regarding his, his characteristics when he was building, um, it does have some unwanted noises at times. But I think that's a way of... Uh, at giving it its own little spookiness and maybe Caesar reaching out through through the amplifiers he's built and letting us know that he's here. But yeah, it's a really cool amp. Philip Sace just used it this past week on his tour through the Northeast. Uh, I tagged along for that tour and I brought that amp and we used it every night and it was uh, it outperformed a lot of the brand new rental stuff and it just uh, it held its own. A little uh, a little combo amp with a 15 inch speaker. It was pretty massive. <laughs>
yeah, I'm going to get into some of the pedals. I'll, I'll uh, show you guys my favorites. And then at the end, I just basically gave you a run through of the amp with nothing in line. And then uh, I played through uh, t my favorite Texas Ranger. And then I played through my favorite Square Face. Both of these, I kind of show how to manipulate the rolling the volume down, kind of turning each one into an overdrive at times, turning them into like a clean sparkle boost. And then your downright, you know, fuzzy, high-end treble booster tone. Check out the pedals right now. Okay, so here is my um, modest but well-loved collection of Caesar Diaz pedals. Uh, funny story about these is, you know, and I also want to note that every one um, is going to sound different. Like I said, these catch crazy prices online, and, and they're all going to sound different, and they're all going to have, you know, different characteristics and different tones. Um, not everyone was cookie cutter, and Caesar was known for taking his uh, artistic privileges on these builds. So I have multiple of these because these produce different sounds. Like, you know, this this one right here is a, a silicon transistor version, and you can see a lot of these, some of the some of the writing is worn off, but it's to my friend, you know. Thanks, Caesar Diaz, and. You know, um, this is a silicon version. So this, these two are germanium, and he used the NTE one hundred and three uh, transistors. So these two obviously have similar characteristics in a way, but this one is extremely brighter and has more gain compared to the germanium ones. This is my most recent acquisition. This is a uh, Texas Ranger from the mid nineties. I actually purchased this from the guy who did the Tone Quest interviews with Caesar. And um, Tone Quest is an online magazine, and Caesar uh, gave tons of information about some of the tricks he'd like to do to Fender amps on those, and you should really search those out. Maybe I can put them down below in the description. Uh, this one, if I have the story correct, the gentleman told me that he was going to the Dallas Guitar Fest in the mid-90s with Caesar, and Caesar was playing there, and he needed something that did a fuzz and an overdrive, and this pedal, uh, if I'm totally honest, is soon becoming my favorite because just with, with the twist of a volume knob on your guitar, you have everything you need. This is a great, great treble boosting, clean drive. It has basically all of it in there. And when he set out to build it that way, that's actually what he did. It's, it's pretty impressive. It has no nine volt jack adapter. It has a uh, <laughs> carpet insulation inside to keep the circuit board from touching any and grounding out any of the components. You can see how the paint just easily flakes off on this one. I'm not sure where I got this one, but this one is incredible. Um, I try not to take it out or do too much with it. This has that ripping, you know, Jimmy Hendrix classic voodoo child tone, very Doyle Bramhall esque, that big bassy tone. Uh, early, early circuit board in here, and I really, really desire this one. These two pedals right here, I can, you know, I won't leave home without them. Really cool uh, <clears throat> tremolo pedal from Caesar here. It's got uh, two speeds. It's got a slow and a fast speed. And he basically adapted the Fender Brown circuit, um, the tremolo system. Yeah, they have that oscillating tremolo. Uh, and this thing hits so hard, it can you can almost make it cut in and out. It'll totally kill the sound and, and hit you back. Uh, towards the end of the video, I'm going to demo this as well. Great when you crank the reverb up. This does something to the tone where it adds a little bit of grit to it. So you get a, a real fat quality to it. And uh, yeah, you get your on off here and you got your, your two speed selector. Killer Killer Pedal, also signed by Caesar. All of these are made by Caesar personally. Um, Peter McMahon took over uh, Diaz ampl Amplification afterwards and he built some great pedals and some of Peter's pedals sound great. But I just, uh, I really like to collect the ones from Caesar. So if you tuned into the channel a few weeks back, I did a uh, FaceTime interview with Philip Sace, and we tried to tell the story about what happened with these pedals here. Um, so, let me see. Okay, this is the silicon one. This one I purchased from my, my good friend, Stephen Holland. Um, he is good old blues on Instagram. Phenomenal player, also a Cesar Diaz fan, but I couldn't say no to the deal he gave me. But what happened was the pot was a little finicky, so I had ordered a new pot. So before I had closed the deal with him, this one popped up. Philip had sent me this link and said, dude, that looks like a great one. When I looked at the pictures, the serial number inside was consecutive with this one, meaning that this one was made probably the same day as that one. So I thought that was really, really cool. You know, I said, wow, that's got to be great. 
So I bought this one at a great deal off of Reverb, and then wouldn't you know, as soon as I fixed the pot in, in here, Steve's fuzz soon became mine. So I had these two with consecutive serial numbers, which was amazing. And a couple weeks back, uh, this popped up. This was for sale in Spain, and this is also consecutive this way. So this was built first, and this one was built after, and this one was built last. So I have three consecutive you know, serial numbered pedals. Really, really wild. Again, all signed by Caesar. Uh, this Ranger is on the lower gain side, so you don't really get kind of that squishy, uh, almost fuzz kind of characteristic like you get with this one. But a really cool, clear, clean overdrive out of this one. This is also a germanium, and like I said, this one is a silicon. The They kind of have some of the same characteristics. The silicon kind of cleans up a little bit better, but I like the way the germanium hits the speaker and kind of creates that big, fat wall um, like this one does. You know, This one is just germanium, and the board is gooped up. I can't tell what the values are or anything like that, and I'm happy because Caesar was protecting something. So, yeah, they're the, they're the pedals I have in my collection. Um, you know, I know there are multiples of the same but you know each one of these like i said will give its own sound and have its own characteristics and do its own thing much different from the one before it even the ones that are consecutively uh numbered here they do have difference and unique quality so you know i'm i was in a position where i could afford to have multiples and you know as a collector these are the ones that i want i'm very grateful to have these and you know these are the ones that will stay and i won't be getting rid of but as I said, I do have a, a 1964 Pro that was modified by Caesar. Um, I'm not gonna pull the chassis out and show all that stuff, but uh, you know, I have some pictures I can post up over here and I'll just give you a rundown of what the amp is all about. It's got super huge transformers in it. It's got a big 15 inch EV speaker in it currently right now, some new old stock tubes. And uh, you know, an amp, it, the amp doesn't come with reverb, but Caesar, uh, added a reverb circuit built it into the amp and the reverb control is actually the normal channel side so he kind of made like a little dwell setup in there really really cool um and the primitive stages of what would soon be his reverb unit that he would sell with his with his amplifiers but it's just really really cool and uh yeah i'm gonna get into some tones now like i said first i'm gonna play the amplifier straight through so you can hear what that natural sound is then I'm gonna do the Ranger, I'll show you some rolled off tones, and then we'll smash the fuzz face and we'll really get some, uh, you know, far out sounds. Um, you have your standard, you know, volume, treble, bass. The tremolo is disconnected, uh, a, a mod of Caesar's that he would do. Obviously V1 is no longer in use, that's something that Caesar would do as well. He would uh, totally remove the normal channel. But like I, I had mentioned, this amp did not come with reverb. But Caesar made the normal side, um, he built a little circuit in here and he made this now the reverb function. So this amp does have reverb. It's about 50 watts. Uh, it has a huge EV speaker in there. Um, and everything is crammed in there, but he figured a way to make it work. The transformers are kind of moved around to, uh, to incorporate the large speaker. And it's just a killer amp. It uh, held up just fine on tour with Philip over these last couple days. And uh, it's a keeper, it's not going anywhere.
Ooh. Mm-hmm. 
know, if I had to compare Caesar's fuzz to like a vintage Dallas Arbiter fuzz face, the three things that jump out at me, and I'm not a pedal builder, but this is what I'm hearing. Um, there's more output, meaning there's more volume on tap. Sometimes you'll step on an old fuzz face and it'll just disappear in the mix. So Caesar was kind enough to make these hits tons more volume on tap. Um, and they do have a natural sizzle to them. I, you know, I would bet my last dollar that these are biased a lot hotter than, um, you know, your standard germanium old vintage fuzz face. And also the, uh, the base, um, I be, I'm, I'm going to guarantee that there's some modifications to the, the base capacitor to kind of reduce the base a little bit and kind of get it to cut. So uh, those are just some of the things that jump out compared this to like the Holy Grail Arbiter Fuzz Face. And, and you know, also with that higher output, I think it presents those cleans, those rolled off kind of SRV, SACE kind of blues type cleans. When you have so much of that output and you back your guitar down a little bit, I think you can access those a little easier, especially with a treble bleed on your volume pot and your guitar. And if you're wondering about treble bleeds, I've done a video on that. You can just search my name and treble bleed, it'll come up. I'm a huge fan. I'm always looking for uh, his stuff, his builds, his amps, his pedals. You know, um, I may be working on a deal right now where I might be acquiring something um, with a really, really cool story and I hope to share that with you soon. But I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to talk about it yet. I appreciate everybody. Look for more videos soon. Uh, I did a little tour with Philip, like I had mentioned, and I'm going to, have to do a video about that coming up soon. Um, just talking about, you know, the events and, and how cool it was. If you haven't subscribed yet and you, you're a fan of vintage guitars, vintage pedals, fuzz, wah, big Fender amps, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, you need to hit the subscribe button right now. Turn your notifications on to let you know when a post drops or a new video drops. Uh, I look forward to connecting with you guys as much as I can. I appreciate everybody. Leave a like or a comment down below and we'll speak soon. Peace. <laughs>